I'm going to show you how to do these super duper slick advanced OBS move transitions. Now, if you are OBS veterans, you might be thinking, Nutty, that's easy. You just, you showed how to do that in like 20 other videos. If you pay close attention, these are not your standard move transitions. Look at the corners of my camera. You see how the corners start sharp, but then as the transition progresses, it slowly becomes rounded. Or how about this one? You see how the gameplay is flat on one scene and then as the transition goes on, it slowly tilts in 3D. Or how about this one where my camera starts rectangular and then slowly morphs into a circle. It's a really subtle difference, but man, it looks really, really slick. I ain't gonna lie to you guys, this video is gonna kick your ass, okay? If you can make it through this video, you've like graduated through the OBS university of nut. Because let me tell you, that one small detail, that one very small change turns these move transitions from like, yeah, just go and install this plugin and you're done, to like an hour of, huh? What? What do you, what do you just do? before you like flip your table like a couple times. So welcome to episode four of the OBS Move Plugin Masterclass. Guys, if you can make it to the end, I want you guys to leave a comment to say, I made it. I made it to the end. I made it to the top of the mountain. As always, let's take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, VIP SD Keys. If you guys need a Windows 11 license, you can get them for as low as $21. Just use my code NUTTY at checkout to get 30% off. And if you want to save a little bit more money, you can get a Windows 10 key, bring the price down to $15 and just upgrade that to Windows 11 and it's totally free. You can use a secure payment method like PayPal. They'll send you an activation code. You plop that into your Windows settings and you're good to go. Get rid of that cringe watermark on your Windows PC today. VIP SED keys, link down below. It goes without saying that I will be expecting at least a basic understanding of the OBS Move plugin. This is part four of a series. So if you haven't watched the first three episodes, check out the playlist up here. Whole playlist, make sure you go watch all three of those videos. And once you've done that, then you can prepare your anuses because you're about to hate me in the next five minutes. Okay, so here's what we're working with. So we've got three scenes here. So this is our just chatting scene and here's our gaming scene. And then we've also got a BRB scene. And so we've already set up a basic move transition. So it's already animating between scenes. But what we want is for our first example, we're gonna set this up so that our just chatting scene, our gameplay is gonna be tilted in 3D. But when we transition to another scene, like our gaming scene, we want it to flatten out and we wanna animate that transition. So to start, we're gonna go into the filters of our gameplay source. And we're gonna start by adding a 3D effect filter. So plus 3D effect, and there you go. Now, we know how to animate this filter because we learned that in episode three. So to do that, we'll add a move value filter and we're just gonna call this to uh, set for now and set the filter to 3D effect and then setting to settings. And then to set the values here, so go back into the original 3D effect and we're just gonna zoom out a little bit and then add a little bit of a 3D tilt just like that. And then we can come back into the set filter and press get values. And so these values here should change. Uh, also just turn off uh, custom duration here. Then we're gonna set this back to flat. So go back over here, set it to default. So it becomes flat again. And then we'll add a second move value filter. So this, we're gonna call this one reset. So set the filter, do the exact same thing. 3D effect settings, get values should be exactly the same. But now, oh yeah, also turn off custom duration. And now when we toggle these filters on and off, it goes from flat to 3D and then toggle the second one, it goes back to flat. So you already knew how to do all that. But now the question is, how do you tell OBS to automatically trigger these two filters at the exact same time that you change scenes? And this is where it gets really complicated. So we're gonna go back out of this. Let's jump into our just chatting scene and go into its filters. And follow along with this, cause this is gonna be really confusing and really weird. Add a move source filter, and I'm gonna call it activate 3D. You'll see why I call it that in a second. Now, why are we adding a move source filter? Because remember, the move source filter is just for sliding stuff around the screen, but we're not trying to slide stuff around the screen. We're just trying to animate stuff and make it 3D. So follow these steps. It's gonna be really weird. Just follow every single step. Set the source to gameplay because that's the source that we want to animate. 
uncheck transform because remember transform is the thing that slides sources around the screen and we're not trying to do that okay so disable that go to the bottom turn off this filter here set the start trigger to activate and then turn the filter on now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the simultaneous move and you can see the two filters that we set earlier. So we have the set filter and reset. So remember, set is what makes the source turn 3D and reset is what makes it flat again. So what this does is it tells OBS that when we change to our just chatting scene, it will automatically trigger that set filter. Okay, so check this out. Go to gaming scene. Gaming, gaming source is nice and flat. And then when we go into just chatting, Look how it slowly animates into 3D, which is exactly what we want, right? That's awesome. You're, this is where you're really gonna hate me, okay? Now, go back to gaming. Uh-oh, it's stuck in 3D, okay? It, it's permanently stuck. We go to just chatting and it, it's fine here because this is what we want, but in our gaming scene, it's permanently 3D. So how do we fix that? We actually need to copy this filter onto every single scene that you have. So if you have like 20 scenes, this is gonna be painful, but let's just go to our gaming scene for now, into the filters, paste that filter in there, right? But instead of setting the simultaneous move to the set filter at the bottom, we're gonna set it to reset because that's what resets the source to be flat again. So now if we do it, go to just chatting, 3D, what we want, and then gaming, now it comes to flat, which is cool, right? That's great. Here's the problem. If I go from my just chatting to BRB, you can see it's, it's stuck in 3D on this scene. And then if I go to gaming, it will go flat and then go back to BRB. It's, it's flat here. So what's going on? Well, we need, we need to add that filter again, that activate filter. We'll just, we'll add that in here. So paste, okay. And what do we want on the scene? We want the gameplay to be flat. So we're going to set it to reset. And then now everything should work. So go to the just chatting scene. It will turn 3D. Go to BRB. Flat. Back to just chatting. It's going to be 3D. Gaming scene. It's going to be flat. And that's it. That's it for our first example. If you've made it this far, take a huge breather. Okay. Because from here on out, it's going to get even worse. Okay. So. Let's move on to our second example. So this time we want to do an effect where our camera has rounded corners on some scenes, but not all of them. So for example, we want it to be like on our just chatting scene, it looks just like this. We have the sharp corners up here, but when we transition to our gaming scene, I want to round off those corners so it looks nice and smooth. And you guys know how to do this already because you guys are super smart. So let's go into the filters and we're going to add an advanced mask plugin. Remember advanced mask is how you get those rounded corners. Change the shape. Set it to rectangle. This is a little bit too small. So we're gonna set the size here, make it a little bit bigger, and then round off those corners here. So just round it off. And we'll do the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna add a move value filter, call this set because this is gonna add the rounded corners. I don't know why it freezes at this point, okay? It always does that, so just wait for it. Set the filter to advanced mask. Single setting, change that to settings, and then get value. And then we'll do the same thing that we did before to reset it. So reset the values. The This should be 1920 by 1080, because that's the resolution of my camera. And we're going to unround those corners just like that, okay? So same thing that we did before. We need another filter to reset those values. So go, go over here and add another move value filter. Call this reset. For whatever reason, it always freezes here. Just give it a second. Change the filter to advanced mask again, settings, and then get value, just like before. So it does exactly the same thing. When we turn set, it's gonna add those rounded corners. Reset is gonna bring them back. Now that is animating too fast, so we're gonna remove the custom duration again for both of them. So set, rounds the corners off, reset, makes it sharp. Again, this is all stuff that you already know how to do, but 
we're going to get it to trigger every time we change scenes. So we'll do exactly the same thing that we did in our first example. So come out here again, jump into our just chatting and into its filters. And we'll do the same thing that we did before. So we'll add a move source filter. And what were the steps? Activate, call it activate. Uh, this one will be rounded corners. So what were the steps that we did before? We're working on our webcam. So leave it on webcam. We uncheck transform. We uncheck this checkbox, set it to activate, turn the filter on, and then remember simultaneous move. And we're going to set this to reset because we want our camera to have sharp corners on the scene, right? So it should be resetting the rounded corners because they're sharp. All right, then we'll copy this filter, go into our gaming scene, into this one's filters, paste the filter in here, and this time, instead of setting their simultaneous move to reset, we're going to set it to set because we want our camera to be rounded here. All right, so let's try this out. So if you go to our just chatting scene, it's sharp just the way we want. And then gaming scene, it becomes rounded. Cool, right? Exactly what we want. And it works just the same way as the first example that we did. Here is the extra wrinkle that is going to make you guys flip a few tables because we have a third scene here and in our third scene here we have our camera but if you click in it see these green dotted lines we've used the alt key to crop off the side of the camera and let's just say we want our camera to have rounded corners here well if you look at it it has sharp corners but then if you go into the filters it's rounded here but like here it's sharp so what's going on i gotta apologize in, in advance because this is this is, this is a crazy tutorial and it's very confusing. I'm so sorry. But the reason why it's sharp in the scene is because whenever you use the alt key and you crop in from the side, you're cropping those rounded corners off. You can see in the bottom right, you can see it how, how, how it has the rounded corners. But when you crop with the alt key, you're just removing those rounded corners. So how do we get around that? The solution is you can never use the alt key to crop anymore, okay? If you wanna round the corners, you can never use the alt key. Instead, what you need to do is we need to go back into our webcam filters, and then we're gonna have to add a third filter here, okay? I told you guys, this, this tutorial is gonna be crazy. So we're gonna add another move value filter and Let's just, uh, yeah, let's just add another move value filter. And this is going to be called sets. These names are cringe. This one is going to be called BRB because this is going to be the set filter for our BRB scene. And this time we're going to go to our advanced mask filter here and adjust our, our rounded corners mask just for this scene. So I think I want to set the height here to 1920 or sorry, the heights to 1080. And then we'll squeeze the width and then when you squeeze the width you can see it come back in here those corners are a little bit too rounded so we'll unround those corners a little bit and then now go back into that set brb filter and click on advanced mask settings and then get value so now you have three move value filters you're gonna end up with three move value filters here to set it to different rounded corners values, okay? Just like this, BRB. Oh, that was a little bit too fast. Let's remove the custom duration. So this was for our gaming scene. This is just for our just chatting scene. And this is for our BRB scene. Let's go back into the filters. Oh, actually, let's go back into the filters of our gaming scene. Remember, we'll copy this filter to make it easier for us. Go back into our BRB scene and then paste that filter in. And then we'll do the same thing as before. We'll set the simultaneous move. Instead of being set, we'll set it to set BRB because this is the filter we made specifically for our BRB scene. And now when we switch to our gaming scene, we've got rounded corners just for our gaming scene. Just chatting, we've got sharp corners and then BRB, you should have the rounded corners just like that. And there you go. Now, a few things to keep in mind. If you keep spamming scene transitions, it very quickly breaks the transitions where you get into this weird state where it's like in between. So it's like kind of 3D and not 3D. Additionally, if you go into studio mode and then you preview your other scenes, you're gonna see that your preview scenes look weird too. 
is because the 3D filter is activated. It's really weird, right? This is just something that you have to deal with if you wanna do these really cool effects. But beyond that, if you wanna take it a step further, you can combine multiple filters. So if on this scene, you want your gameplay to be both 3D and with rounded corners, you can do that as well, but obviously you're gonna stack so many filters and it's gonna be super confusing, but that is something that you could do. But yeah, anyway, guys, how was that? Was that easy? Was that <laughs> was that nice and simple to follow? So many filters. This is definitely my hardest tutorial that I've ever made in this channel. So if you did make it this far and it worked for you, let me know in the comments down below. I gotta go back to making videos that are easier for you guys to follow. So guys, send me a video on Twitter if that worked for you because I would love to know that my really complicated tutorials are actually something that people understand and can actually do. But until then, Send this to one of your cool streamer friends and I will see you guys uh, in the next video that's hopefully way more palatable than this one.